Good morning. Daily devotion time. Friday the 12th of November. A very soggy Friday in Sydney. Today, friends, we begin a new series in a new book, the book of Joshua. There in the book of Joshua, we read this instruction from the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Be very strong and very courageous. Do not be afraid. Not once, but several times the Lord issues this instruction. But surely that's quite unreasonable to command someone to be strong, to be courageous. Certainly it would be quite meaningless for us to randomly issue that sort of command to another person. How then could Joshua, how then could God's people be expected to obey this command? It is clear that God wanted Joshua and the Israelites to hear and to heed this command. He gives it to them several times. The theme of the book of Joshua that we're examining is the establishment of God's people, Israel, in the promised land, the land that he would give them as their place of rest, the land that he promised them long before as he made covenants with Abraham. The book of Joshua will, de will describe the fulfillment of those promises, that promise in particular made to Abraham. Context is, of course, that the Israelites, God's people, spent many years in slavery and then, because of their sinfulness, 40 years wandering in the desert before they entered the promised land. And now, as the book of Joshua begins, they are on the edge of the promised land. Moses has died and been buried. Joshua has been appointed to take God's promise and make it into a reality. The problem was that this promised land that they were about to enter was occupied by the biggest, scariest superpower of the day. There are three primary actors in the book of Joshua. Firstly, the Lord. Secondly, Joshua. And thirdly, the Lord's people, the Israelites. Remember that the what name Joshua is the Hebrew version of the name Jesus, which we learn in the New Testament means the Lord saves or the Lord gives victory. So in Joshua, we have a prototype of Jesus. What we will see as we work through this book is what God did for his people through that first Joshua, the first Jesus, overcoming the powers of evil and taking his people into a place of rest. So the Old Testament in this book in particular acts like a giant arrow for us, pointing forward to the complete fulfillment of God's promises of rest, of salvation, of victory, the promises that are ultimately fulfilled in Jesus, the one who brings eternal rest. As the book begins, Joshua is spoken to by the Lord. Let me take a few minutes now then to read chapter one of Joshua. And as I do, take note of the instructions that the Lord gives his people via Joshua. This is Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. 
keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. But to the Reubenites, the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord your God will give you rest by giving you the land. Your wives, your children and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. But all your fighting men, ready for battle, must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help them until the Lord gives them rest, as he has done for you. And until they too have taken possession of the land the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. But they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only May the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Did you notice how many times that refrain of be strong and courageous occurs? The Lord, through this passage, reminds them that he will fulfill his promises to them. And that he'll be with them. We read verse 5. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. So be strong and courageous. They have the Lord's promise that he will be with them. He is the one who will allow them to defeat their enemies. And to take possession of the promised land. It is because of the Lord and who he is, not who they are, that they can be strong and courageous. It is in the Lord's strength, not in their own strength. They will be filled with courage from the Lord. Did you know that the word, the root meaning of the word encourage is to fill with courage? That is in, to fill with courage. To encourage is the act of giving courage or supporting one another. Friends, this is a critical role for Christians. We're all gifted with uh, the ability to criticise and to find fault from 500 feet away. But the gift of encouragement, that is one we need to develop. That's one we need to make strong, to give one another courage. The courage to stand firm, to press on, even when the sadnesses and discouragements come into our lives. The main reason we can press on with boldness and in, with courage is, however, not because of the encouragement of others, as important as that is, but because we have the assurance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has fulfilled all his promises to us through the Lord Jesus the one who gives us eternal rest, rest for our souls. It is in the power of God's Holy Spirit that we can be strong and courageous right now, confident in the knowledge that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please strengthen us through your Holy Spirit so that we can be strong and courageous, trusting in your sure and certain promises. Father, please also strengthen us 
that we might be an encouragement to one another as we face life's daily challenges. For your glory we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.